Welcome to our worship service today, a special day with the Bautistas here uh, providing our music for us. Today we look at God's love for us, as we'll see that in word and song. This morning, we'll follow the direction of the Bautistas as they, they do different songs and then also play for our hymns. They're going to open our worship for us today. May God bless our worship together this morning. This opening song called The Most Beautiful Thing, it just highlights the, the contrast between the beauty of God's creation and the even more beautiful thing of our salvation, because that is indeed the most beautiful thing. subtle hues of a delicate bloom and a songbird that greets the new morning a cascading stream flowing through fields of green and the mountains that rise up before them and oh so many ways the beauty of life has shined on surpasses by far the beauty I've seen the most beautiful thing I know is the cross with the Savior who died for us all and the blood that flowed from his hands and feet and the wounds he bore so that we'd be redeemed is the most beautiful thing I've stood on the edge of a grand precipice overwhelmed by the span of creation then sat teary eyed while the sun the sky as it settles beyond the horizon and I'm still so amazed at the beauty that life has shined on my face but one thing stands alone unrivaled and incomparable the most beautiful cross with the Savior who died for us all and the blood that flowed from his hands and feet and the wounds he bore so that we'd be redeemed. This is the most beautiful shined on my face but one thing stands alone unrivaled and incomparable the most beautiful thing I know is the cross with the Savior who died for us all and the blood that flowed from his hands and feet and the wounds he bore so that we'd be redeemed. This is the most beautiful thing. This is, this is the most
most beautiful thing. Please stand. We'll follow the order of service that is printed in your bulletins. We'll follow along responsibly. You can also find it on the screens. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his, praise his holy name. I will sing and make music. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp and the sound of singing. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Please be seated. We'll sing together how great thou art. i 
we confess our sins. We have come into the presence of God who created to love and to serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Savior calling Come just as you are with no regret Take the burdens you have carried Lay them down and I will give you rest I will be your refuge and shelter from the storm Jesus. 
I'll invite the children forward at this time for the children's devotion. Right, you're all up here today. Today, you notice that we have special music, right? That's pretty cool. And uh, today, we're going to hear a lot of different songs. But today, the, the big theme is God's love. And I'm going to read a passage, and we're going to have this throughout the, the service today. Uh, this will be the only time that you need to come up front. But the passage that I want to look at first is from Ephesians 1.4. It says this, He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Now, how many of you are familiar with this? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by his toe. If he hollers, make him pay $50 every day. My mom says to pick the very best one, and it is you. Do you know that one? You ever do that? To try and pick something? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo? Or maybe you, you have a coin. This one's kind of a cool one. Somebody gave it to me. It has uh, Martin Luther on one side and the Luther Rose on the other. And you say, okay, what should we do today? Should we play on the swings or should we ride bikes? Heads or tails? What do you think? Heads. Heads? All right. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's tails. So what are we going to do? I guess ride bikes maybe, huh? Or maybe we can't play on both. All right. We can do both. Or have you ever done this? Somebody says, all right, I want you to pick straws. Ever done that before? All right, so go ahead, pick a straw. Just pick one. And whoever gets the longest one, pick one. All right, there we go. I didn't make enough for everybody to pick one. All right, hold them up. Let's see who has the longest one. Oh, let's see. I know it's not that one. That one's really short. That one's short. I think it might be... Ooh, it's between these two, I think, actually, or maybe Crosby's in there, too. All right, that's how you would do it. So then you would put them together, and then you would see who has the longest one, and they're the one who gets to pick first or gets to choose something first. You can throw those away when you're done later. But in any case, that's how often people choose things. But did you notice what that Bible passage from the Apostle Paul said? It said that God chooses us, and he doesn't choose us because we were the best, he doesn't choose us because somebody goes around and says, oh, you are the best, or that person over there is the best. It's not like the commercial. Maybe you've seen that with uh, Charles Barkley, and there's a bunch of kids, and they're playing basketball, and they're picking teams, and all of a sudden, it's up to the captain to pick one of the teams, and he looks, and there's a little short kid, and then there's Charles Barkley, who was a professional basketball player who's super big and tall. And it's a pretty obvious choice in that case. Maybe choose Charles Barkley to come and play basketball for you. But our God doesn't do that. In fact, this Bible passage tells us that before we were born, before our parents were born, or our grandparents, or our great, 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 great grandparents were born, in fact, before the entire world was created, our God chose us. And then so that we can hear the message. He makes sure that message is out there for us to hear and to come to faith. Because he wants to tell us about what our Savior did. And we've seen that in the last couple of weeks, right? We saw our Savior, his death on the cross. We saw his resurrection. And right now we're talking all about what he's doing uh, as he was making those appearances to his disciples. And that pretty soon we're going to celebrate that our Savior went back to heaven and that he's still in heaven for us. And this is the love that our God has for us. Not because we deserved it, but because he loved us. He chose us to be part of his family forever. And so you're going to listen to the next song. And I want you to listen to exactly what our Savior has done for us. 
and how he thought of you, especially as he lived and as he died for you. So let's pray. And dear Jesus, I thank you for your love, a love that chose us before we ever did anything to be part of your family forever. Be with each of us as we show love to you and to all those around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming up today. The second aspect of God's love that we look at is love sent, as recorded in 1 John chapter 4. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now, when you think about love, on the human side of things, it can be a bit fuzzy, can't it? You have the, the very romantic type of love that is associated with Valentine's Day. Then you have the very generic type of love, the type of love that you have for your favorite restaurant, maybe for your favorite movie, for the favorite place that you like to go on vacation. And then there is that sensual type of love, 
The type of love, unfortunately, that can get some people into trouble because it often goes along with the lusts and the desires of this life. But deep down, the love that often humans express, it has conditions placed upon it. There are all sorts of requirements, and there's this give and take that takes place when it comes to human love. But as we see, when it comes to the love that our God has for us, this is that grace, that undeserved love. It's the type of love that doesn't set up any conditions whatsoever. In fact, when you think about the love that God has shown to each and every one of us, it didn't depend on us at all. Because how often do we not even show love back to our God? In fact, we often turn away from Him, we hate Him, we curse His name, and yet our God continues to show love to us. And that is the love that was sent as He sent His only beloved son into this world of sinful rebels. And you see that in Jesus' life as he came into this world to to live among sinners just like you and me. As Jesus went out there and he taught and as he preached, as he showed people the path of life, the means of salvation. But you see it especially in what our Savior was willing to do to go to that cross and to hang there on that cross and in that moment to endure what actually we deserved. As not just the pain of the nails and and the torture that he had received prior to that, but that our Savior was willing to endure hell in our place. That he would take the punishment, that he would take God's wrath. That our Savior would become that atoning sacrifice which if you want an easy way to remember atoning, to make at one, that's exactly what our Savior Jesus did, to make us at one, to restore that relationship, that love that our Heavenly Father has. And now we have peace between us and our God, and we can continue to look to our Savior Jesus and His love which we're going to look at next as we see the Bible reveals that love that is found. Why you agreed to save us When you knew the price you had to pay Was pain beyond endurance I know if I were in your shoes I wouldn't hesitate to leave this world of fools Challenged you to come down off that tree. You never did. You never budged an inch. You never did. You never even flinched. You could have left us all and wrote us off as a lost cause. 
really could have left us But you never did You never pushed an inch You never did Oh, you never even flinched You could have left us all But you never did You really could have left us But you never did You really could have left us You really could have left us The third lesson today from Ephesians 1.13. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. The third aspect of God's love that we look at today is that love found. And when you think about that love that our God has shown us, it's not actually all that hard to find. It's not as if it's a, a treasure map that has all sorts of riddles that you have to solve, or, or maybe there's all sorts of, of clues that you have to figure out. As you see, the Apostle Paul, he really lays out this map to salvation and to God's love as he writes to various congregations. Congregations who unfortunately in their previous life were certainly wandering around in the darkness. People who were completely lost, who did not know anything about the true love of God. These people who unfortunately did not know the path to everlasting life. But in a way, as we read Paul's words this morning, he could be writing to us today. Because we still live in a world where people are lost, where people are wandering around in the darkness and they have no clue. They go out and they worship the gods that they have created. They continue to want to live in the darkness of, of despair, of sin and death. They continue to want to live in the shadows away from the light of the gospel message. But as we read the Apostles Paul's words for us this morning, we have to also make that application that it's not just for everyone else out there. But Paul is writing to us as well. Because you think how often in our life we too have fallen for the desires, the lusts, the cares of this world. How, we, how often we have listened to the lies that the devil tells us and, and we have believed them and we have followed after them. How we too often want to live in the, the shadows, in the darkness, that we want to stay away from the light because the light reveals our sin and we don't want others to know. In fact, we don't even want to admit it ourselves. But that is where God's love finds us. And God's love lays out through word and sacrament exactly what our Savior has done for us. And through the word and the sacrament, he, he brings us into his family. He seals us as one of his own. It's almost as if he is taking a, a stamp of approval upon us. And he says, you are mine. You are my child. But he doesn't do this to, to subjugate us. He doesn't do it to manipulate us or, or make us his slaves. No, he, he puts his stamp of approval on us because now we are holy and blameless in his sight. He wants others to know that we are his. He wants you to know very definitely that you are his. And because of that, you are an heir of everlasting life. That heaven is yours. And now this treasure 
this tremendous treasure that our God has, has laid out in front of us, the means to salvation and heaven and our eternal reward that is already ours, he now says, I want you to take out there and I want you to share it with others. As we see the next part of God's love in a moment is that love that we take out and we share. There's a sound rising up through the air and drowning out the bitter cry of despair bellowing over the voice of fear it's the sound of hope resonating out where the hurting are it echoes through the walls of a broken heart penetrating down through the deepest scar it's the sound it's the sweet, sweet sound of a sinner's praise when their wayward soul is found. As they sing a song of amazing grace, all their voices rise in a sweet, sweet sound. It wells up to the tops of cathedral halls, reverberating out through the chapel. The sound of hope It beckons to the hearts of the world in need Telling them the story of the redeemed Proclaiming that Jesus has set them free It's the sound of hope It's the sweet, sweet sound of a sinner's praise When their wayward soul is found As they sing a song of amazing grace other voices rise in a sweet, sweet sound. A sweet, sweet, sweet sound. It's a sweet, sweet sound when we sing our praises in the name of Jesus. The final portion of God's love is that love returned, Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Now, in some ways, the last aspect of God's love is once we have that love, what are we to do with it? And as you see from the Apostle Paul, he tells us that we should be imitators of our Savior and the love that he has shown to us. This is a love that God has shown us, and now that love, we can't hold it back. We can't contain it to ourselves. That love has to go out there. It has to be shared with others. But this love also is a tough love. 
Because when it comes to the love that we show to others, it is not ignoring sin, it is not excusing sin, but it is a love that motivates us and encourages us to, yes, go out there sometimes and point out sin, to point out when people are are living on a dangerous path, when they are living in that darkness of unbelief. It is that type of love that is to be concerned about others. And ultimately, it is that same sort of love that our Savior showed to us. Because our Savior, he didn't excuse sin. He didn't ignore sin. But he certainly dealt with sin. He pointed out sin. And then ultimately, he took all of our sins to the cross and paid for them there. As he once again, as the Apostle Paul reminds us, became that that fragrant offering to the Lord. But then he encourages us, once we have experienced that love, when we have experienced that forgiveness in our own lives, that mercy that our God has shown us, that we then go out there and imitate that great love. And when it comes to that love, I hope that it is natural that it is not forced upon you, that it is not fake, that you're not using that love to to get something in return, that it is not, not a manipulative type of love, but it is just like the love of our God, that unconditional love that goes the extra mile, that does the extra thing to show that love to others. In fact, it is the type of love that is willing not just to go to our friends and our family, but yes, even to our enemies and to show them the love of Christ, to point them to what he has done for them. It is that love then that motivates us towards acts of service as we go out there to serve our God and to serve his people. It is that love that is acceptable to our God as as we bring our own fragrant offerings of sorts that stand before our God as we give thanks and we give praise for what he has done, as we go out there and remind people about this gift, the message of salvation that changes everything, that message that brings life and hope to a dark world. And so may we continue to show that love. May we continue to experience that love until the day that our Savior calls us home to be with him and all those who have gone before us as we experience that love that will never end. Amen. He said, lay down your nets. Come follow me without regard for what lies ahead. And we should never look back. Just trust and believe that he'll lead us to the promised land. And as we take his hand and go on the path to heaven's home, we may venture out into the unknown. But there is joy journey, an amazing life to live, when we're called by the Savior to come and follow Him, though we hope for the future and the glory that awaits, let us live in this moment and embrace each step we take, we follow in His footsteps, there is joy in the journey. too tired and worn to carry on and take one more step but our strength is in Christ and we cling to the hope that soon we will be at heaven's gate and what a glorious day when we'll be at our journey's end and our own eyes will finally see heaven but there is joy journey, an amazing life to live, when we're called by the Savior.
Savior to come and follow him. Though we hope for the future and the glory that awaits, let us live in this moment and embrace each step we take. We follow in his footsteps. There is joy in the journey when we live a life of gratitude for the new life that he gave. We fill our voice with thankfulness for the price he had to pay. But we join our hearts to worship him and praise the Holy One. But we lift him up to all the world and tell what he has done. There is joy in the journey, an amazing life to live. When we're called by the Savior to come and follow him, though we hope for the future and the glory that awaits let us live in this moment and embrace each step we take when we follow in his footsteps there is joy in the journey yeah joy in the journey there is joy in the journey There is joy in the journey. Please stand for prayer. We'll follow the prayer of the church as printed in the bulletin. You'll also find the words on the screen. We'll read it responsibly. Almighty and merciful God, on this glorious day, we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Increase our faith that the message of the empty tomb may fill our lives and make us glad each day. When we are weak, be our strength. When we are sad, be our song. And when we sin, be our salvation. Remove the hurt of death from all who mourn. In moments of grief, call believers through the voice of our good shepherd and embolden us to follow his promises. In their hopelessness of despair, turn the faithless to trust in the only way, truth, and life. Wipe away tears born of death and give on birth to a living hope in the hearts of the lost and troubled. Use our witness as compassion and comfort for others in need of mercy. King of kings and Lord of lords, destroy all dominion, authority, and power that stands against you, whether seen or unseen. Whatever evil exerts itself against your saving will, false teaching or lukewarm faith, Satan's lies or worldly pleasures, empty worship or futile religion, rule it for the sake of the gospel's free course. Triumph over our enemies and empower the church to fight the good fight to the end. Never leave us or forsake us. Walk among our churches, O living one, as the faithful witness and firstborn from the dead. As your angel sent women with the good news of the risen Christ, call women in our church to announce, He is risen. As you sent your disciples with the breath of the Spirit, call those in our church full of the Spirit and wisdom to administer the keys of the kingdom. Wherever we live and whatever we do, help us to be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us to give the reason for the hope that we have in Christ. Heavenly Father, keep the baptized united with your Son in his resurrection. Put to death the fleshly urges of those caught in addictions. Clothe in your righteousness anyone ashamed of good intentions which have fallen short. And assure those searching for purpose that their eternal identity as your dear children is sealed. Thank you for the power of baptism working in our lives and for the certainty of its promises through the resurrection. Enrich us with everything we need for life and godliness. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence.
merciful and loving God, we thank you for your never failing love that has brought us into your family and blesses us constantly. We thank you for Stephen and his daughter Marissa as they use their gifts today to praise your holy name. Be with the Bautista family as they travel around sharing your love with congregations all over the United States. And we ask that you would bless their ministry and service to you. We ask you that you would be with Debbie and Eric Bemis, especially today, and also with their granddaughter, Alexis, and all who mourn the death of Jul Julian this past week. We know that our times are in your hands, and with the death of this young child, we give you thanks for the faith that he was given and the glories of heaven that he is now enjoying with you. While there are tears, grief, and challenging days ahead, Give us comfort in your promise of the resurrection and life everlasting. We pray on behalf of all those who are still enduring conflict in Israel and ask that as nations wage war against each other, that peace and restoration will soon occur. We also give you thanks today for the 25 years of marriage that you have blessed Andrea and Ben Fayok with, and we ask that you would continue to bless their family with your love as they reflect that love to each other. And O oh Lord of life, you have done mighty things for us. We pray through him who is the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ, our Lord. His name is above every name. To the glory of God the Father, amen. And we join together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue by singing together Amazing Grace, hymn 576. <laughs>
And now, brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We'll close today with In Christ Alone, hymn 510. Good morning once again, and thanks for joining us for worship. A special welcome to our guests and visitors with us. If you see the, co the connection card in the pew in front of you, and if you'd like to sign it and leave it in the offering plate in the back there or hand it to one of the ushers on your way out, that would be great. Also, welcome to those who are joining us online today. A big thank you to Stephen and Marissa and their whole family that is here with us today. I'm going to let Stephen talk about their ministry and, and their life on the road in a little bit. Uh, just a couple of things. We do have Bible study today. We're looking at the book of Acts and how it applies to our modern church today. So please join us for that. There's also the snacks and everything in there. So please come in there. Um, next Sunday, we will not have Bible study because we have a very special thing that's happening next week. Marge Manning is turning 100 years old. So we're going to have a big birthday party and lunch for her following the service, so please join us for that. 
Good Shepherd Bible Camp, that's the one that some of us have been going to the last couple of years over in California by Big Bear Lake uh, outside of LA. The registration has opened, so if you go to their website and you're interested in going to that, uh, you can do that as well. Our family is going to do that. We're going to go to Colorado first for the International Youth Rally, spend some time with my family up there, and then after that, drive over to Good Shepherd Bible Camp, so we'll be there as well. It's going to be a nice long vacation, I guess. Um, every member visit, it is going to be a vacation. Every member visit, uh, if you're interested, please sign up. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex there. Uh, that is either at your place or wherever you choose, or you can come and visit me here at church if that works for you. Just put your name down, uh, what days are, are some of the days that work best for you, and I'll give you a call, and we'll set up those meetings. I think that's all the announcements that I have for you. I'll let Stephen take over. So God's blessing be a blessing to those around you, and I'll see you later at the door. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for uh, uh, allowing us to come and share our music mission with you this morning. Uh, this is the first time we've been to Holy Cross in Tucson, but we've been to the to Grace and uh, Redeemer, and uh, long ago there was another church. Um, uh, yeah, something Mountain, I don't, can't remember what it was called, but um, a Dove Mountain or something like that. And uh, anyway, we've been to uh, uh, all over the country. We share our music missions with congregations. Uh, we are Wells members from uh, uh, Sturgeon Bay. Our, we're members of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, that's where my wife grew up. And uh, But basically, uh, what we do for a living is travel around the country sharing our music mission with congregations all throughout the country. We've, we've been to all of the lower 48 states. Uh, we've shared our music ministry with with uh, hundreds or thousands upon thousands of people for the last 13 years. Uh, and this is pretty much what we, we do and what we're going to continue to do as long as God continues to bless us. Um, all of the songs that you heard today uh, that, that we sang solo are original songs that I wrote. Uh, and it's really what my music ministry is is kind of built around is is uh, uh, what I refer to, refer to as reflections of my faith. And uh, I, I've been told by many people that they can really relate to my lyrics and how I put things. Hopefully you can too. And uh, um, it kind of uh, uh, goes into our mission statement as uh, we travel around the country. We have a simple mission statement that that guides us and keeps us focused on what we're doing. And that's very simply to use my original Christ-centered music and the gifts that God has giving me, given me and my family to uh, enlighten the lost and encourage the found. And I hope you found the music to be encouraging and uplifting, maybe even enlightening. Uh, if you'd like to help support our music ministry, we are kind of like PBS. We're a listener-supported station. Um, we don't ever ask for honorariums from congregations. Uh, we don't want uh, money to be a reason why uh, uh, a small congregation may say no. So we kind of take that issue off the table. But uh, as I said, this is the way we make our living. This is what we do. Um, and uh, um, so we do rely on God's people to help uh, keep our music ministry going. Uh, so if you are interested in helping with, with that, there's a couple ways you can do that. There is a wicker basket uh, in the center aisle here at the end of the, the center aisle uh, as you go out of the sanctuary. Uh, if you are interested in, in helping us out with a free will offering, then uh, we appreciate it like you wouldn't believe. That's the main way we're able to continue on and keep our music ministry going. Also, out in the narthex there, uh, uh, there is a table with our CDs on it. I have five professionally produced CDs that I've made over the last several years um, that contain original Christ Center music that I wrote. You've heard a few things today, but there's a, a lot of songs on there that you haven't heard. Um, and uh, those are $15 each. The CDs uh, are $15 each. Every CD comes with a digital download code, you, so you can download it to your digital device. If you don't have a CD player and you don't want a CD, we also sell uh, the digital download cards for $10 each. Uh, so, And we take all forms of payment, uh, including Venmo. So uh, we'd love to have you take our music home uh, even after we're long gone and, and have it bless you. Uh, um, as we're traveling around the rest of the country. So um, my family will be over there. I know we're having Bible study, and so most people are going to go that way. But, you know, please make a point to go that way on your way out and, and check out uh, our, our uh, 
uh, our uh, CDs. Uh, I also, I forgot to mention, uh, I have my wife and I, my beautiful wife sitting here, Christy, and I have nine children. Um, pastor hasn't caught up with us yet, but maybe, maybe he's working on it. But, uh, and all of us, uh, my wife and uh, me and our nine children and our 110-pound dog and our cat traveled around the country in a travel trailer just like the one you see out front there. In fact, it was a little smaller than that for eight years full-time without a house, that we just went from Wells Congregation to Wells Congregation for eight years. The pandemic kind of changed things. We, we uh, eventually settled in a little small farmhouse that we were able to rent for half the price um, um, up in Sturgeon Bay. But we're still doing this music ministry uh, uh, full-time. We're just doing it a little differently now. But I just wanted to mention um, the, uh, the the 11 people in a small travel trailer thing because it, you know, it is one of those uh, novelties that you don't hear of. And we did survive. Our kids actually are still sane, and so are we. So. Um, now, one of my daughters is Marissa. She is my second oldest daughter, uh, the one that sings with me. She's, uh, what, how old are you, 25? Something like that. Um, my kids range anywhere from five years old all the way up to something like 27. I don't know, but uh, I lose track. Anyway, Marissa uh, is trying to make her living as a uh, portrait artist. And, then she, and out on, on the art, uh, table out there, you'll see artwork. Uh, that's original art that she's done. Uh, she's trying to make her way uh, a, a living doing that because I don't pay her. So um, she does travel around with me, and, and this, is, this is what she loves to do. Uh, but, but her main uh, uh, occupation is as an artist. She does original artwork and she also does portraits for people that that might want to have something done of, of you know their grandkids or themselves or uh, um, a pet or you know whatever. She's done it all and so if you are interested in having something like that done in the near or distant future talk to Marissa and she'll tell you what she can do for you. Otherwise check out her artwork. She has cards and prints available and uh, of original stuff that she's done, and uh, I tell you what, don't take my word for it. The, I, I like to brag about my daughter because you know she's my daughter, and I, 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 I hope I had something to do with the talent that she has. Probably not, but uh, anyway, the uh, um, this past May, she entered her first art fair in Door County, Wisconsin. And if, if anybody of you know what Door County is all about, it's it's a very it's a resort area. People from all over the country come up there and they, they vacation. It's also very artsy, very kind of highbrow place. We're not that way, but uh, that's the way a lot of people are. And she entered the art fair up there back in May and uh, won first prize. And uh, so, yeah, she's very talented. Anyway, with that, uh, I'll just say uh, once again, uh, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to be here this morning. Uh, we are very honored and blessed to be able to share our family and our music ministry with you. So uh, we're going to leave you with a uh, playing as we kind of march out here, uh, a song from our latest CD called, uh, the CD is called I'm Home. It's a, it's a CD that I produced in my basement during the pandemic. I had nothing else to do during that time, so I produced a CD on my own. Uh, in the past, I, I went to Nashville, Tennessee to do all my production work. Uh, but this time, I produced uh, my own CD and, and did all the work on it, did all, played all the instruments and, and uh, programmed everything. And uh, the, the last song on that CD is a version of Be Still My Soul, a beloved hymn that a lot of people love. Um, Marissa is singing the vocals on this. I did the guitar and the orchestration. And so I just want to kind of give you, a, let you know that what you're hearing is a sample of that CD. So, and uh, I think it's a beautiful rendition of Be Still My Soul. So with that, thank you so much. God bless your Sunday. And, uh, and uh, until we meet again, thank you so much.